Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is Alex Bennett, and we're going to be here until midnight Eastern time, so stick with us, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody live in our studio. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. You, you, you know him, you love him, you've seen him before on our program because he's on a lot. Here he is again. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely, the attractive... Will Durst. Hi, it's, Will. It's good to be here, Mr. Alex. The, yes, explain why you're here, actually. I'm doing my little show at a theater called uh, the Playroom Theater. Yeah. At 151 West 46th Street on the 8th floor, right in Midtown, right off of Times Square, right next to the TGI Fridays. And I'm here Tuesday, November 13th through Sunday, November 18th. TGI Fridays. I know where the... Uh, what street is it on again? 46. 46, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Across right. from the pig and whistle. Yeah. <laughs> you have across from the pig and whistle? Yeah, is, it, yeah. is there still a pig and whistle? Oh, it's a bar. It's not a, it's not a grocery store. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, the, it, was the pig and whistle a grocery store at one time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it uh, okay? I'm trying to remember what the pig and oh, bit. Piggly Wiggly is Piggly what I'm Wiggly. Is, yeah, that was a grocery store. That was a grocery store. Pig and whistle, though, I do remember pig and whistle as being like a candy store or something. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't know. I'm not from around here. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm doing the show. Yeah. 90, uh, 80 minutes. Because there's not as many laughs as there normally are. But a uh, <laughs> little tiny theater, about 65 seats. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's a gem. Yeah. yeah. So, well, so we're going to come down and see you on... You're on the guest list for so Saturday I feel night. guilty, though, about taking up two free seats in a 65-seat room. Uh, don't worry about it. Trust me. We're just looking for bodies. Yeah. 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 I mean, is it is it a financial reason that you come here to do it? Or is it to get seen? It's uh, a little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. Yeah. And and uh, the show should have ended because it's called it, the subtitle is Midterm Madness. Show should have ended five days ago with the uh, midterm elections, but I kept it going for two weeks, and then I don't know what I'm going to do now that the Democrats have taken the House. And Wait a minute! They're, they're a already of, on TV. They're already. Running, so, talking about yeah. the next election. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's it's five days before. Uh, it's five days after the most important election of your lifetime. Like yeah. seven hundred and twenty-one <laughs> days before the most important election of your lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, November third, twenty twenty. Yeah, but, but mark but, it down. But but shouldn't they be forced like the networks or whatever? Just cool it until the first of the year. You know, this happened but in 2016. Just, this happened in 2014. They this, gin it up like crazy because they got nothing to talk about if they don't do that. Well, there's going to be enough fights. There's going to be plenty of fights. Trump is uh, the president, Donald Trump. Trump is already uh, uh, threatened that if they investigate him, he's going to investigate them. <laughs> For what it was like, it was like I never understood. Oh, uh, the Democrats are, are you know, they're energized. Uh, the whole base is energized because women, you know, feel so disenfranchised, and they're going to come out and prove. And the and the Republicans are are they're they're excited too. Their base. Because of why? The Kavanaugh thing? That, that white men are afraid they're losing their entitlement? I never understood why they thought the Republican base was going to be energized. They're beginning to worry about Kavanaugh. Why? Well, because he's been very, very quiet and hasn't been hanging out with his conservative pals on the Supreme Court. I think I think he's a, he's a stealth liberal. I really do. You do? Yeah. I think it was the only reason... That Kennedy agreed to step down while he was still alive, although there were questions because he was a swing vote. It always depended upon what side of bed yeah, he got he out. He was of. a conservative. He was a conservative. He was yeah. appointed by Bush. Yeah, Bush won, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, and I think the only reason he stepped down was if if his former law clerk, yeah, uh, Kavanaugh, got the gig. 
But but then of course the other day, poor Rose uh, Bader Ginsburg, uh, uh, she Ruth Bader Ginsburg shows up uh, with three broken ribs. She fell down. Yeah yeah right. She got in a bar fight. Come on, it was <laughs> obvious. She was she was she was probably throwing a couple roundhouses at Kavanaugh. They were you know they were halfway through their second pitcher. Wow, that's my guess. Wow. Oh boy, yeah. You know, uh, I'm, you know, I feel sorry for her because she should be retired and enjoying life and so on. And I think she just feels she can't. She's got to hang on, two more years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I'm worried that Trump is going to see, you know, the whole world fall down around his ears, and there'll be a phony kind of attack on either him or America, and then suddenly. You know, martial law and the Proud Boys start, you know, wandering around streets, arresting people who look at them funny. And and then uh, Congress will be uh, arrested and put in jail for inciting violence. And, uh, you know, and then there'll be loyalty oaths and, and I'll be in a, a camp, a re-education <laughs> camp. That's yes. It. I really believe Yes, this. you yeah. will. Uh, and 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 for good reason. <laughs> 1934 Germany. Hello. <laughs> for good reason. Now I uh, 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 what I love about Trump is is the way he decries every election that he loses. It's yeah, yeah, fraud. Fraud. Yeah. But he was yelling fraud before the last election where he was elected president, yeah. <laughs> and when he won, we all agreed with yeah. him. <laughs> He was right. He was right. Yeah, he said that if we voted for Hillary, we'd have a president under criminal investigation. And sure enough, we voted for Hillary, Hillary and the president's, president's under... Didn't they say that about Goldwater? They, they said if I, if I voted for Goldwater, blah, 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 uh, we'd escalate the war in Vietnam. And so I voted for Goldwater, and sure enough, we, <laughs> we escalated, escalated the, the war, war in Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same joke. It's, it's an just old recycled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't change dicks in the middle of a screw. Yeah, that only worked because of Nixon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I kept saying that uh, I kind of, you, you know, look back now on, on, on Bush and don't think he's that bad. <laughs> the halcyon days of George W. I, I almost long for the days of, of, uh, of George Bush. And Dick Cheney, and, yeah. And then I suddenly realized that, well, his father wasn't that bad either. And then I think back even further, and I go, well, you know, maybe Reagan wasn't that bad. <laughs> and then I th look back even further and say, well, maybe Nixon wasn't terrible either in comparison. And then I say, you know, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I think, yeah, gone too far there. Well, I, I just, I think he would have uh, gotten props if he'd gone a little easier on the Jews, but, you know. Yeah, the six million, you know, that's such a big number. I was watching a documentary on uh, on uh, Netflix on uh, Hitler and the Andes uh, and that Hitler got away during World War II. Oh really? He's in the Andes? There were a lot of theories. The FBI in fact was looking for Hitler long after World War II. Well you know he blew himself up in a bunker they never found the body right? Well they say that the body has never been uh, identified. Uh, they, I think they had the teeth, maybe? Something like that? But it wasn't... It was kind of... And the Russians have all the, the forensics on it. Because they got there first. But they've held it under wraps. So we never had real proof that Hitler was dead. So there were sightings everywhere from South America to Brooklyn. <laughs> really? You know, people saw somebody look like Hitler and said, you know. Like Marathon Hell, Man. when I was a kid after World War II, I saw a guy in North Beach that looked a lot like Hitler. No, that's Gino. That's, was, yeah, that's Gino. That's Gino. Gino and Carlos. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, uh, they, they, but they say that here's what the scenario is. The, the main street there, right outside the bunker, was wide enough for an airplane to fly in and was, in fact, being used as a landing strip. And where was this bunker? And, and that they took off in a plane and they went to Norway where they got into a German U-boat that pretty well didn't surface until it got to South America. That's the theory. It's entirely possible. You know. He and, did keep a low profile, though. You got you to give him that. You know, he saw what happened to Eichmann. Well, I yeah. mean, 
where did all those Germans wind up? Uh, a lot of them in our... Uh, I- Eichmann wound up down there. Uh, Bormann? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Bormann wound up down there. Uh, and uh, Brazil or Bolivia? I think it was Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. The boys from Brazil, remember the yeah, Ira 11 yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know... So I'm I'm claiming Hitler's still alive. I mean, ooh, he's, he's very ooh. old. Yeah, he's very, very old. old. <laughs> of course, they did have the good Nazi scientists, so they might have been able. He's probably just a head in a jar. It's, it's probably a Marvel comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. so they always love to bo- bo- uh, begin their stories in the Nazi. Yeah, yeah, era. yeah, yeah, yeah. Magneto and uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I hear, you know, I, I keep thinking about going back to San Francisco, uh, you know, I mean, just to visit. Uh, but I'm afraid to. Why? Well, because I kind of get the idea, okay, and this is a, a please uh, disabuse you of the notion. Disabuse me of the notion that it's really a terrible town right now. You know what? Uh, Twitter went public like two yeah. and a half years yeah. ago. 20, Mind if I blow 20, my nose? No, please do. Uh, 2015, 2016. And because they had been paying their kids in shares, when they went public, nine months after that, when all their shares were vested, a million, no, a thousand millionaires hit the streets at one time. So property values are ridiculous. But it's all centered east of Van Ness and south of Market. So I live out in the, the suburbs. Right, right. I live out in the Sunset District. You, you know, prices have risen maybe 10%. You really can't tell that much. Out, of, You know, I don't live in the city of San Francisco. I live in the county right. of San Francisco. Right. Right. So, you know, it's it's the same city. You know, you can't... A lot of stuff is gone that used to be there that used to hold and cleave under your heart, and a lot, it's different, but that's the price of living in uh, the city. Wow. Wow, because uh, I, I talked to Bubbles, and I lived in the marina, and he says that that's been impacted too. A little bit, you know. Well, I mean, the been, Richmond has been impacted. I, mean, I lived in an apartment in which I was paying for two apartments, a little under three thousand a month. Yeah, that's not two gonna, apartments. That's not going to happen. And now uh, Bubbles says that maybe those apartments are uh, four four thousand each. Forty five. Forty five. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know where I live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to come there all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it, that's, that's a pretty big jump. I can't afford to live there anymore. Well. And you probably couldn't afford to live in that no. part of town either. No, not in that part of town. You know. And but the Sunset District, you can still get an apartment for 2800 you know, you know if we a ever, one bedroom. If we ever get evicted out of this place, uh, it's bye bye to New York City. Where would you go? I don't know. We, I mean, we, who can afford New York City no, anymore? No, Actually, but. girlfriend has an, another apartment she owns. Where? Uh, over on the uh, on the east side, the east, upper uh, east the, side, the west side. Oh, west side. West side. And uh, yeah, you were appointed west. Yeah, and um, we could live there, but it's very small. Yeah, what would you, you know? do with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and girlfriend works. So, uh, but we couldn't afford New York City. Come on, no. I mean, even a, you know, a, a, well, I'm not paying anything here, but this apartment probably, if we finally do come up on a rent, rent stabilized should be about $1,500 a month. Okay, that's rent stabilized. Uh, that's what we're fighting for. Uh, so if it were 1500 a month, fine, I'm here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But if all of a sudden they want to raise it to, you know, market seven, value. 7500 or yeah. something like that, forget it. I'm, I, can't, I, can't, I can't afford it. There's nowhere in New York City I could afford to live. I can't, you can't get a studio apartment for, you know, 2000 a month. Well, the same thing that's happening here where all the, the hipsters and the kids are moving to Brooklyn is happening in San Francisco. They're all moving to Oakland. But now oh. Oakland is getting a little gentrified. So I don't know where they go. Detroit, Vallejo. Uh, yeah, they can't afford Marin County, can you? No, no. Mill Valley is ridiculous. Really? Sausalito, yeah. You How can about go you to go San, Rafael. Yeah, yeah. San Rafael. How about San Anselmo? Uh, you know, the closer you are to the bridge. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, that's a little further from the bridge. Yeah. San Anselmo. Yeah, it's right. It, it's almost parallel to. Uh, you go down what we call the Miracle Mile. 
or as I used to say when I was a kid, it's a miracle if you get off this mile. <laughs> There's a mile of, of road called the Miracle Mile between San Rafael and San Anselmo. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, you know, so you're talking north of the Civic Center. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. No, not we're not north of the, San Rafael's not north of the Civic Center. The Civic Center is north of San Rafael. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is San Anselmo north of that, or is it? No, before? It's about the same parallel. Yeah, you, you know. Okay. I think. And then there's Fairfax. There's Fairfax, which is and, a gorgeous little hippie town. Yeah, which is one town too far, so it's probably still reasonable. Yeah. All right. I don't know, man. Healdsburg is ridiculous. But then you get out past Fairfax, and you've gotten the land that time forgot. You know, I mean, uh, that was my favorite place to go driving because you go driving through the woods and. You know, St. Francis. Yeah, because Sir Francis you go Drake. out, yeah. Marin County is outside of San Francisco, and you go past all the very livable areas, all the areas where people live, and suddenly you get into just complete woodland. It's you called know, West Marin. West Marin. It's, yeah. a, it's where uh, Lucas uh, yeah. has his... Uh, Who conveniently put his place on Lucas Valley Road. Yes, he, it was Lucas Valley Road before he yeah, was ever yeah, there. Yeah. And I wonder what part of him went... Where shall I build it? Oh, Lucas Valley Road. It's named. I, everybody will think it was named after me. I've never been there. Uh, you never been to Skywalker no, Ranch? No. I, I've been there Always several wanted times. To be. Oh yeah. You all, one time I went there to work on something, and another time I voiceover? was invited to lunch over there. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did some voiceover work. Uh, there's a movie called Strange Days. I love Strange Days. Yeah, well, you know there's an announcer. With Ray the, Fiennes? You know there's an announcer at the very beginning. Oh, really? Uh, uh, announcing the end of the world or whatever. No, no, Millennium. Or millennium or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's doing a talk show. And they brought me in to wild track that because uh, they needed some. They needed just as a, a temp track. And they sent it down to what's her name, Catherine Bigelow, who directed the movie. After they heard me do it, said this guy's perfect for it. So I walked out of it. They said, I'm, "We're sending this to Bigelow and saying this is the one they should use. They shouldn't even hire an actor. You're perfect because you're a talk show host." And they sent it down to Bigelow, and she turned it down. She didn't like it. So I didn't. I just got paid for the uh, wild going track. out there and doing yeah. the wild tracking for it. Yeah. However, I did wind up in another movie. I was in George Clooney's first movie. What was his first movie? One Fine Day. Oh, yeah, with, uh, what's yeah. her name? He wakes up in the morning and Michelle his Pfeiffer. clock radio goes off. Yeah, yeah. And it's me. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have to do anything. They simply asked if they could use the track. Do I get paid for it? No. Yeah. You know, do I get credited for it? No. Really? Yeah. So I'm at the very beginning. You have to listen very closely. If you've got surround sound, turn the front speakers off. Ah. <laughs> And that was my movie career. I was in Jack. You were in Jack? What did you uh, do in Jack? I played a, a motorcycle cop. And Francis Ford Coppola, I got to have lunch with him. But they cut my scene. I, I just couldn't oh, be really? big enough for him. Yeah. No, oh, wow. I know. Too bad. I and know. you had lunch with him? I had lunch Who with him. Who paid for lunch? Oh, he did. It was oh, okay. on set. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, craft services. Yeah, now your wife's been in a lot of them. She was in Nightmare Before Christmas, which was also a Disney movie, and she had three voices in Nightmare Before Christmas. She was in it, Greg Proofs, Glenn Walters, a lot of guys that we know from San Francisco. Were yeah. Because Henry Selleck directed it in San Francisco. It was produced by Tim Burton. And he's so jealous of, of the fact that he didn't direct this movie. He keeps trying to replicate it with uh, Frank and Weenie. And, well, uh, Frank and Weenie, the, he did as yeah, a film yeah, that for was his, Disney. Yeah, yeah. That got him thrown out of Disney. Oh, really? Initially. Yeah. What I happened? thought that was like his uh, THX 1138. Well, it was. Yeah. But he did. He, what he was doing is one of the... What happened was... They realized that the, the old men at Disney were dying off and that they had to bring in some new blood. And so they brought in a whole bunch of new blood to work side by side with the what they called the eight old men. I think it was the eight old men. Uh, and uh, Burton was one of them. And one of the things they had to do as a, as a project was a film, to do a short film, okay, so uh, he went out and he did this thing called Frankenweenie, which is a brilliant concept. It's the old Frankenstein story, but it's a kid's dog who dies. A dachshund. And, and he, he loves him so much, he wants to bring him back to life, so he reads all these science books and brings him back to life. 
It's a beautiful idea for film. Disney looked at it and said, this is horrible. It's too dark. It's not Disney. Goodbye, you're out of here. And wow. they've kicked them out of Disney wow. for it. So years later, he's a big director, and guess what Disney has him make a movie out of? Frankenweiner. Frankenweiner, yeah. yeah. And if you last long enough, you can be ahead of your time. And by the way, it was a flop. Yeah, it didn't work. Didn't work. Corpse Bride didn't work. He keeps trying to replicate the success because, you know, that was his yeah. idea. Nightmare Before Christmas was his idea, all the characters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so Debbie did voices for that, and it's very popular. She constantly gets letters from people who are collecting autographs of all the people who were in the movie, and yeah. she signs the photos wherever they are. So she gets a royalty check like once every three months, yeah. and I get a royalty check from Jack once every three months. And and um, one time a year, her check is like for you know, two grand or something, and then it's $300, the other three. And my checks are always $2.36. Really? What yeah. are hers? Yeah, hers are, you know, a couple grand sometimes. Really? So so we get the checks at the same time because Disney puts them out. So she'll go, oh, I, I got a royalty check from Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, you get a check too. What's... <laughs> she just rubs it in. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have I gotten some for like fifteen cents or something like that. I, what I did was, I did two things that every now and then all of a sudden a royalty check will show up. One was HBO's One Night Stand, right, right, which they keep running because they've got their you know online services and so on, and so they run a lot of those. those and you did things. the voiceovers and the I, introductions. I, the first, the first uh, eight shows, yeah. Uh, and every now and then I'll get a, a check for like, you know, whatever uh, for those. It's not a lot, but it's something. You know, I think I made many, 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 many thousands of dollars over the years off of One Night Stand. And then there was Comedy Tonight. And every now and then somehow I will wind up in a clip that they sell to somebody and uh, there, uh, there's another check for me. But I'm still surprised he hasn't... He, archived those on some sort of channel because they're incredible. Yeah. I mean, the the people that he got, he got Whoopi, he got Bobcat, he got a bunch of people. He got me. He got you. Yeah. <laughs> he got me. But here's the thing that, that, that it, it gets to me is that the one person, you know, they had about eight comics that I did the openings. Yeah, for, yeah. Okay. Uh, the one person who I get the most checks off of is the comedian I like the least, Bill Maher. For some reason, because he's still on HBO, they always run his one night right, stand, right. so they keep renewing those. Makes sense. They may put some of the other ones to sleep, uh, but I every about once a year I get a Bill Maher check. You know, so what the hell? It residuals, folks, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. yeah, and now there's so much production. There's so many TV yeah. channels. There's so many shows being... I, I ask people what their favorite show is, and and they tell me, and it's on a platform I never heard of, much less the show title I never heard of. Oh, the best new show I've seen is on a, a platform you probably never heard of. Sundance Now? No, DC Universe. No, never heard of it. It's a pay subscription thing. It's oh, really? called Titans, and it's a great show. Yeah. How much a month? Uh, Well, I'm... Sliding in on somebody else's oh, subscription, okay. but it's ten bucks a month. It's uh, everything's no, ten bucks no, a month. No, it's uh, five ninety-five. I think no, seven ninety-five a month. Oh, okay, but you see, here's what's happening. I, 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 soon, everybody like Disney's going to have their own channel, and DC has their own channel, and da, 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 and all these things that you figure, oh well, I'm only paying ten bucks for, or nine bucks for. Your total bill is going to come to several hundred a month to get all the things you're getting now for almost free. So. Yeah, I just want TCM, that's all I want. Yeah, Turner Classic Movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, although they they canceled their film struck. Yes, I, they, that's what I saw. Yeah. yeah. They had a special uh, channel for classic movies, and it was yeah. almost like uh, the Criterion Collection for movies on, yeah. on broadcast or cable. And uh, they canceled it, and they gave everybody back their subscriptions prorated. Oh, boy. I Too know. Bad. Too bad. But anyway, uh, listen, let me, as long as I got you here, and we can take a little extra time on it, doesn't matter, uh, because I've got you here, I may as well use you. 
uh, we didn't talk about, uh, haven't really talked about the midterms and the way they turned out. Oh, that's over. That's so over. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your show is called Midterm Madness or whatever, you know. Except for Florida. Except for Florida. Again. Yeah. Again. What is it with Florida? They like elect vote. They like voting and elections so much <laughs> that they extend them past they, their expiration they date. They do. Yeah. They just, oh, man, they love to vote. And they love to count votes. What is wrong with Florida? I don't know. Do you have any? I, I live there, and I can't tell you. What we should is wrong circumcise with America, cut Florida off at the Georgia border, and kick it into the Caribbean. Well, I, when I was down there, I used to say on the air, "This is the reason I only lasted three months <laughs> in Florida because they don't have a sense of humor about this down there." As I, uh, I said, you know what your state reminds me of. The only thing it looks like is a giant penis. It's hot, it's wet, and the it's main, wrinkled. And the main highway going down it is a huge vein. <laughs> and at the very tip, you've got this uh, drip this called, the, called the Florida Keys, <laughs> which kind of is like a ven probably a venereal disease of some sort. <laughs> and next thing you know, people are going, let's lynch him. <laughs> solidified yeah it's crystallized ejaculation that's what yeah, yeah. that's what the, the keys are but the, yeah. isn't that what it looks yeah, like yeah it does you know um it's hot it's wet it's wrinkled yeah 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 it's moist so, but i mean well, there was actually a, a looney tunes cartoon where bugs bunny does saw off florida i remember that yeah. yeah and i I, what I've often said is after living in Miami is that they say that because of global warming, eventually the seas are going to rise and half of Florida is going to be underwater. And I said, as long as it takes Miami with it, I'm happy. Were you in Miami at the time? Yeah. Last, <laughs> last time there was a, a big, uh, big uh, uh, hurricane. Uh, uh, the lower part of Florida got it. And I said, am I supposed to feel sorry? You know, I mean, what? What do you got down there? A bunch of conservatives and a couple of old Jews, and that's it, you know? All right, the Jeremy Kramer, Jews and Cubans, Jews and Cubans, <laughs> go together like cigars and Rubens. <laughs> Jeremy Kramer. Oh, boy. What happened? What's he doing? I think he's in L.A. I don't know what he's doing. See, these are comics we go, what's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Bob Rubin, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's still doing it. Yeah. You know, there's a bunch of us still doing it. Well, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? I know. What else? What, what spent else? 40 years getting good. Yeah, you spent 40 years getting good only to be told you're too old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People don't, you know what we don't revere anymore is that with age comes ability. You know, comes virtuosity. Yeah. You know, you as a, as a com comic, and I'm sure I'm going to see this on Saturday night. You will. You're a virtuoso, you know, and um, I and I think in my field I'm a virtuoso too. As well. But nobody will listen to me when I call them up and say, "Hey, you know, I'm really looking for a job." You, uh, you know who gets a pass on that? Who? That ageism, blues artists. Blues oh, artists oh, can oh, be you, as you, old you, as you, they want to be. No, in fact. You can't be a young and No, blues Robert artist. Cray is just coming into his own. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he hit 60. <laughs> oh, it, it, at 20, they go, he plays terrible harmonica. <laughs> plays terrible harmonica. Oh, hey, listen to him now. He's yeah, the best yeah, he's yeah. ever been. And he's playing the same harmonica he was when he was 20. You know, also, uh, if you're going to be a blues artist, you have to poke your eyes out. Blind Melon Le uh, Jefferson? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not willing I was gonna to go I going to name myself far. Blind Lemon Pledge. <laughs> Blind Lemon Pledge? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm not willing to do that. But I'll, I'll tell you, I've been doing political comedy. And when I started out doing it, I started out doing it yeah. in 74. It was the end of Watergate in Vietnam and Nixon and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And, uh, yeah, and so I... I started doing political material. I didn't do, you know, exclusively, not until I moved to San Francisco, and that's when uh, Reagan had a, you know, Reagan made comedy, political comedy fun. Right. You couldn't make fun of Jimmy Carter, you know. If, if, if you were mean, you know. Well, years ago, I remember Mort Saul, uh, who was, of course, a, a great um, political comic. Still is. Uh, when Eisenhower was president, he was having a great time, but the minute Kennedy became president, he said, there goes my career. 
Well, he wrote for Kennedy on the campaign. Yeah. And then in 1961, after Kennedy was inaugurated, Dad, who he knew well, Joe McCarth, uh, Joe uh, Kennedy, mm -hmm. Joseph, uh, the uh, the Scotch runner, not the rum runner, but uh, he came supposedly to Mort Saul and said, "Stop picking on John." And Mort said, "Hey, dude, that's my gig." And and Joseph Kennedy went to all these club owners and said, "Don't don't uh, don't hire this guy." Wow. Yeah. Wow. Supposedly he went to Enrico and said, don't hire him. And Enrico said, screw you. This guy helped build the Hungry Eye. So Joseph Kennedy supposedly went to the city of San Francisco, knew somebody, and got uh, all the back receipts for the Hungry Eye and had it reclassified as a nightclub instead of a restaurant because they were paying taxes as a restaurant. But they didn't sell enough money to qualify as a restaurant not a percentage of their of their yeah. uh, revenue was so they were retaxed and it was like five hundred thousand dollars right. wow just because wow. he hired mort Saul. Hmm. yeah and then mort got bitter and became a, a right winger for a while yeah kind of. he, yeah he's still bitter he's yeah. oh he i hear he's very bitter he appears every thursday night in mill valley at the 142 Throckmorton Theater, yeah, which is where you should have your reunion. Yeah, like, he, let me ask you this. Saul, does he still have his chops? He has some chops. He has some chops. Yeah. He's got, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he does, you know. I mean. He's, he's like 90. Yeah, because we were just talking about how as you get older, you get virtuosity, but sometimes you can get too old and you... Can, yeah, can and you know, talk. comedy's a, a limber, nimble sort of well, the only uh, thing, verbal Well, the thing. only thing you might lose with age as a comedian is timing. All right, no, he still has timing. Oh, he really? He still has oh, timing. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's all cadence and rhythm and scan, you know, and yeah. and also deep thoughts. Yeah. You know, he yeah. throws some deep thought. Me, I'm just surface i'm like a well, this, like a flat stone this guy is uh, is will durst and uh, he's here in person i'm right here in now. new york and, and he's here in new york let me let me uh, take a picture of you there so they can see tuesday through sunday yes at the best little theater in times square and uh ladies and gentlemen thank you so much thanks for, for having me mr uh, that's will durst great seeing uh, the grand uh, the grand apartment of which I have heard so much. <laughs> Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that was Will Durst. Boy, I just quickly changed my clothes, didn't I? <laughs> Actually, we recorded that yesterday. So that's why I, I, here I am with my clothes changed. Okay. Uh, sometimes I, I try to dress the way I did before the week, day before, but the, those went into the uh, into the uh, laundry, <laughs> and I wasn't going to go fish them out just to do the show, so so it would work right. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Let me see here. Let me turn on the uh, the Gabnet uh, uh, lines uh, so that you can you can call our fine program if you'd like to using Skype. That's the methodology we use, and uh, you can do that, and we'll uh, we'll be happy to talk with you. Okay, uh, if you don't know how to use Skype or how to call and be part of the citizens panel, and or even what the citizen panel is, you just go over to our. Uh, let me turn my mic down just a little bit. Um, you just go over to our gabnet.net site, and over there on the right-hand side of the page, it will tell you exactly how to do it, okay? Ah, uh, yes, uh, and uh, anyway, there, there we go. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, we, we almost have him in there. There we go, and then we also should get uh, Phil. Um, there is our uh, our guy with the, uh, with the uh, de -de 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 Morse code. I can't remember names. Uh, yes, right. And, uh, uh, you know, my mind is a blank tonight. Uh, come on, Phil, help me. Fangy Stu. Huh? Fangy Stu. Fangy Stu? No, you're not Fangy Stu. Oh, oh, I, I'm impersonating him now. Uh, Phil Meyer. 
Phil Meyer, and next to you is? Uh, next to me is the bed in the hotel. No, no, oh, no, Vern. no. Huh? Uh, uh, Vernon. Vernon. See, I'm terrible with names. I'm just horrible. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, where yeah. are you? You're in a hotel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Why? Uh, it's a, a carpet thing, you know. Yeah, it's a carpet thing? Yeah. You're, you're munching uh, some carpet, are you? Yeah, we're, uh, uh, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. And uh, then I'll, I'll bring it back to the Bay Area stores uh, yeah. to imbibe. Yeah. There, by the way, is Jeff and uh, Vernon hey. and Phil. And uh, that is the beginning. Oh, wait, I've got, you know what I haven't done? I haven't put your pictures up. There, now everybody can see. Uh, yeah. Ver uh, Vernon, by the way, plays a mean Morse code. <clears throat> Now, what did you just, what did that, would you just, beady beep? That's uh, general call, CQ. CQ, okay. And that would make what? Everybody in the wonderful world of Morse code, per, 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 boy, I can't even talk tonight. Prick an ear? Well, it basically means, here I am, anybody want to talk to me? Oh, I see, okay. Well, I want to talk to you. How are you this evening? I'm just fine. Back home in Louisville, as you can see, my ham station in the background. Yeah, why did you, why did you, you were out of town for what reason? I just went on vacation. Yeah, yeah, you were having some bad, bad, uh, bad uh, signal down there. Oh, yeah, the bandwidth at that, the Wi Fi yeah. supplier that they have at that condo, um, the bandwidth was horrible. Yeah, I've lost complete command of the English language tonight. I don't know what my problem is. Well, uh, uh it's uh, it's all the drugs, hmm? you know. All it's the, all the drugs. well, all those years ago. Yeah, yeah probably, and and yeah. whatever you can take now. Yeah, uh, 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 and um, anyway, uh, over the uh, weekend or last day or two, last day we lost uh, an old friend of mine, Stan Lee. Uh, it was over ninety. With ninety five. Ninety five. Wow. Uh, and I played over and over again on our 24-7, an interview that I did with him. God, it had to be somewhere uh, somewhere around 1970. Well, no, it had to be actually 73. It was mornings at WPLJ. And wow. uh, uh, he came in on that particular morning, and he did it several other times, but this was the only time that, that uh, I have a recording of it. Uh, and uh, it for people who are uh, comic book fans, really strict, really com big comic book fans, this show was a gold mine. Um, because to begin with, he, he went and listed everybody that worked in the bullpen at Marvel Comics in those days. There were about eight of them. And these were all the people who drew all the biggest comics mm -hmm. you saw and were involved in it. And then, on top of that, uh, he then read uh, a, a Spider-Man comic that was written for newspapers but never published. And so actually it's a never published uh, Spider-Man comic that he was reading on the air to the audience. And to this day, so far as I know, it hasn't been published at all. It was just done as a sample for the newspapers. Uh, and it was very good. It was very That's good. what the fuck ton of money. Huh? Uh, but that's worth a fuck ton of money. What do you mean it's worth a fuck ton of money? So that, that whatever he was reading? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Who knows if he if he kept it? You know, I mean, I, I imagine he did. Or whoever has it, I'm sure. Who? Yeah, but he said he, he said the reason he brought it and read it on the show was he had found it sitting in his desk, and it was something they had done and was never, ever published. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so for comic book fans, that this show I was running, if you didn't hear it, well, too bad, you know. But it was it's still it, up there. Isn't no, it? it's not. No, no. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was just I, running twenty four seven. I didn't post it. At oh, all. there was a picture in the upper right hand corner of. Oh, the, the, that uh, is just my. That's my uh, my little. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, tribute to him. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, the the actual you had to go over there to hear it, and uh, I I you know the people who love those comics and are big comic fans like our friend Tony for instance, uh, it's a real real find, uh, and he also talked about me doing the 
the comic book uh, can you know the comic book awards show uh, being the host and thanking me for doing it and i didn't realize it but that was the first comic book awards show ever that mm. i had emceed so uh, good long life though gotta say but yeah for him oh yeah yeah, yeah and, 95 if any anybody who's under like uh 80 you know, I, I feel really bad. At my, don't take this the wrong way. I think I feel really, really bad about because they don't have that opportunity to at least live to, uh, you know, live 80, to see themselves but, fall apart. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry. It lived it long enough to see yourself fall apart. Well, live long enough, at least until 100. Well, he didn't make it to 100. That's a, that's an account. That's a rare accomplishment. 95, 95. But 95 is a very good life. But I. Uh, I, I uh, you know, it's building mental, an imp- help building an empire and whatnot. Yeah, it's yeah. a mental mindset. You know, as, I respect uh, how healthy you'll be at a certain age. Tomorrow, uh, my mother and my sister are going to come down to uh, Chattanooga to visit me. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, and in December, my mother will be ninety-one. Really, and she's, she's healthier than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is she as or more conservative than you, or is she less conservative than you? Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, growing up, she was a Democrat. Uh, although she lives. Well, just then don't talk politics with her because she might want to kill herself. Yeah, you really. Know? Uh, but uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure my sister's conservative, but I'm not not too sure about my mother. Rob, how you doing? Good. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. What? Do anything interesting this weekend? Uh, Mm, no, nothing just, that I well, can think of. Just like me, you know. <laughs> Quiet. I sat around doing nothing. You know. Yeah, well, it's going to be busy now. Or the holidays are coming, holidays. so a lot of traveling and. Well, you're going to you're going to be doing a lot of traveling. Got to go family, family, family. Oh, family. oh, oh, oh. Okay, for the holidays. Mm. So you're going to go up to Long Island, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, are you going to stay uh, at the Bennett Bunker? No. No, I'm going to stay at Casa de, la, de Alfano in Long Island. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has a yeah, family. Talk politics to people you otherwise don't like, so you have an excuse not to buy him a Christmas present. And right, say, smart <laughs> enough to, to, to not go there. <laughs> I, I, in fact, have offered, I think I have offered uh, Rob the ability to stay here if they ever want to, but, uh, you know, they have, they have family and stuff up here, so yeah. it's not a big problem. Uh, you know, so I'll be there for Thanksgiving and then for Christmas. So really? I'll be driving a lot of driving over the next six <laughs> weeks. We're six weeks from Christmas. How long so. does it take you to get from where you are to where you're going? Uh, it's about five, a little over five hours. Mm. Oh, really? Not bad. It's not bad. It's like driving to LA from San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of the drive seems to be from the time that you hit the bridges the New York area bridges to get all the way out to deep Suffolk County, Long Island. Yeah. Cause really otherwise it's all straight driving at, you know, 70 miles an now, hour. Again, so. again, you're stuck with the family in these situations. Yeah. Do their politics yeah. align with yours? We don't really discuss. Oh, politics. okay. Yeah, that's what I, figure. I, I would yeah. suggest this holiday season that everybody not discuss politics with their family, because within any given family, there's got to be a difference of opinion. Unless you're looking for an excuse to save money on holiday shopping. <laughs> yeah, okay. I will tell you that my brother, who I never expected, he, he waited a whole year to tell me voted for Trump. Smart man. And he voted, waited a whole year to tell me because he's embarrassed. <laughs> oh, he just he couldn't, he couldn't vote for Hillary. Well, he just said, and now she wants to run again. They're saying, you know, she's, uh, she yeah. better fucking not. Somebody Please needs to put no. a bullet in her hand. Well, really. well, somebody, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like me. Well, well, well if, 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 I didn't say I'm going to do it. I said someone. If she had it. a disappointment not winning the presidency, she's going to have an even larger appointment, but not even getting nominated this time. Well, let's hope she doesn't get nominated. Because yeah, really. I, don't, it, 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 he, she is the reason that we have Trump as president. Because, like my brother and many other people I spoke with, my father, who, who said, "I just can't vote for her. I ju- yeah, yeah. maybe he'll be better." Well, you have the only thing, the only thing is you did have other choices. 
Well, but then people feel like they're throwing their vote away. Well, yep. uh, I think voting for Trump was throwing your vote away, too. Well, you know. look, you, you said it, and, and I, we all thought it. You know, maybe Trump will surprise us. Maybe. Oh, you I know, prayed for that. I prayed for so, that. I thought. So that, we all did. We all did. I thought that I would, after a couple of months, have to say, well, he's not. A, you know, because I had such lowered expectations. Right. Such lowered expectations that I had hoped that he would uh, not. It would be better than I thought. He didn't have to go far to be bad, good enough for me to go, well, he's not as bad as I thought he was going to be. All right. Mm. But somehow he not only lived up to my lowered expectations, he Made surpassed them. Yep. That's right. That's, it reminds me, it reminds me of the old uh, joke. You know, you're drunk when you go to brush something off of, off your shoulder and it's the floor. <laughs> no shit. at least he didn't disappoint you yeah no he didn't disappoint yeah, Paul was set so low and yet he's the best limbo man i know yeah yeah when exactly. you assume the worst no worst case scenario can surpass but before that. we get into all this that stuff you know um i'm i'm you know i've been in the market for a new computer okay a new, a new mac yeah. uh uh, and um, I, I, you know, I was thinking about these new Mac Minis, which are really quite loaded, but they have no audio input. Um, no. Well, you can't. Uh, no audio input. They have to have some way to bring yeah. audio into them, or you. Well, maybe, they, well if they have a USB or something. So. Yes, but who? Not everybody has a USB. I don't have a USB board here. No, but uh, you can use uh, that Behringer. It's a twenty-nine dollar item, and you can plug it into um, uh, uh, the thing, and then off of it, you you get Motorola cables uh, to plug into your board. Uh, I'll I'll send what you, you the Motorola cables. There's no such thing as a Motorola. Yeah, you mean R C A cables? Yeah, R C A. Yeah, R C A's. <laughs> yeah, well, they, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's the way you can do it. But then there, there's other things. There's other things involved. Like, for instance, I have this computer here, and the nice thing to be able to do is to take your old computer and take your backup and have it just kind of clone itself to the new computer. Mm. The only thing is, I can't do that. Yeah, they'll figure out a way to why, fuck you out of that, too. Well, no, why? Because yeah, why? they've got flash drives in this thing, and they go yeah. up to only two terabytes, and my f main hard drive is more than two terabytes. So somehow I'm going to have to build my whole machine from scratch again if I get yeah. one of those. Then I looked at the, um, the uh, trash can, uh, the Mac Pro. Yeah. And, I yeah. And um, it has its problems because, again, in that particular situation, you can't install hard drives in it. What? Yeah, but why would you? Why Wait, would you? You can't install a hard drive on a tower. No, that's no, not you no, you can you can do about, you can do an external. You can do an external, but right. you can't do a hard drive. Like with this Mac Pro that I have here, I have four slots for hard drives. I have a terabyte in my Mac Pro. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that's flash. Yeah, SSD. Yeah, yeah, but that. But I'm saying is, if I want to take if I if I want to <laughs> emulate my pro so that when i put everything in i can just turn it on and it looks like what i've got right now i mean i've got all my stuff i can't do it now i'm gonna have to start from scratch and build the whole thing up because the fucking people at apple uh won't let you you know you can't install hard drives anymore you can't do any of that they want to sell you a flash drive at twelve hundred dollars for a two terabyte flash drive you know yeah. i mean it, it, it's all kind of unreasonable. The only advantage to the uh, to the trash can is you can add extra memory yourself. Yeah. You know, but that's uh, about all you can do with it. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, I I may have to go uh, go away from using the Mac. Just not to rebuild it yourself. Well, I I mean I could just keep using this one till it fi finally peters out, which I'm probably going to do now because this I, thing works fine, you know. And I got all my stuff on it, and there are, are legacy programs I've got in there. I got one program in here 
that I can't duplicate on another machine because I bought it from iTunes and then the company went out of business so I can't download a new version of it to another machine. Now, the Mini that you bought from me yeah. uh, has the audio input that you're yes. looking for. Yes, yes. And you got a new drive put in it at, uh, at Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, so why can't they put a bigger drive in it? Put a bigger drive in what? In the Mini that you got from me that has the port that you need. Oh, but no, because no, because I want to. Uh, the, the, these minis are fine, but yeah. they're not the high-powered minis that the new ones are. They're uh, they're as high. They're not as no. high-powered no. as the one you got from me. N they are much more high-powered. Really? Yes, much uh, more high-powered. I seven three point oh. Yeah, I seven. Yeah, three point uh, three point five. five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And with a turbo boost up to four point eight. What the hell are you doing with that thing? Huh? What the hell oh. are you doing with well, that thing? It would thing? be my main computer and put yeah. this one to rest. But I, don't know, I, I gave up on all that crap. I, I I don't really see I don't really do anything that requires that level of But what kind computer. of morons don't put an input for audio in their new piece of equipment? Once again I envy you. What? I said once again. I it's Rob Alfano who says a remark that I envy strongly. It's like you're t you're inadvertently or maybe advertently yeah, wait minute, wait trying to achieve hold, some hold, level yeah. of Zen masterhood. Uh, hold, that, uh, hold, hold most on, of us hold, can't aspire, hold on, aspire to. Achieve. Hold on a second, Brian. This is what I do for a living. I know. And so it's a second. tool for me. You know, it's not. I, I don't buy it because I want the biggest and the best computer. I buy it because I need a new one. And I need to, uh, and, and this is what I use to do my, my, uh, my, my craft. I understand. Work. I'm just, okay. I'm coming, I'm, if I'm condemning anything, I'm condemning the Apple Corporation for being so proprietary. Well, I, yes, you know, but fuck them. I mean, they want to up, you know, all of a sudden they want to go to flash drives and that's wonderful. If the flash drives were as cheap as a goddamn hard drive and as I'm big as saying, a goddamn hard drive. What point is the threshold, drive. does the rubber band break and you just say fuck it all? I mean, I've got 32 gigabytes of memory in here, uh, and and so far as the hard drives are concerned, I got 16 uh, terabytes of uh, of hard drive space in this machine that I've installed myself because it's just got these slots you put it in. You know, you give me a hard time about my 64 terabytes. What? You give me a hard time about my 64 terabytes. Uh, wh wh where 64? In in my Drobo. In your Drobo? Well, who, who cares? Which is hooked yeah. up to the um, uh, to the Mac Pro. Yeah, but the Drobo is a waste of money. Then, in all due fairness, I should con I should I should praise you for your patience, Alex. You have more than I do, and you're twice my age. All due respect. Yeah, but I mean, I just I just find that it would be I would I I would like to think if I was going to upgrade to something, I could be upgrading it, but not having to give up stuff. Yeah. Did you ever have a drive that failed? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, well, what oh, yeah. the Robo does is it's a, uh, it gives you two, dr two drives of redundancy. Who cares? Uh, well, get who cares? I've got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got backup drives. Yeah, but if, if, if you have a bad drive... I've got a backup on it, everything, Phil. Yeah, you can pull it, replace it, and it will rebuild. Well, I, I, I don't give a shit. I, I have backup drives that back up all my other drives. Well, yeah. So I, that if they go bad, I simply pull that drive, I put in a new drive, and then I simply port over all the stuff that was on that drive over to the new drive. Yeah, it's it's a lot easier to do with a Drobo. Well, yeah, and a lot more expensive, Phil. How much was your Drobo? Uh, I don't remember. It was probably eight, nine hundred dollars. Oh, I think it was a little more than that. Well, then with, the drives. I had, yeah. I had five, uh, eight terabyte drives. Oh, you had to put the drives in. Yeah. So now we're up to about two. Gotta, now we're up to about two. Twenty-eight uh, SSD. Up to about two grand now, right? Yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to put that out. Yeah, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I can buy a new computer for that. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Why well, did you ever consider about buying a used yeah. Apple? I've thought about it. I've thought about it. Oh, you know. or whatever. Uh, I mean, I've seen them on. I uh, used. I, I've seen. I some do of, it all the time. I've seen some of the trash cans on uh, on eBay, and they're you know they're certified as being new and almost new. 
Buy and, them from Apple. I guess I could, although I would. That's kind of like having the IRS do your taxes. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, uh, hey, Apple, I, I, I want to get no. a used Apple. Okay, here's the price. And it's probably, I could get it a lot cheaper by going on eBay. You know? yeah. yeah, but I don't trust eBay, at least on Apple. Yeah. I know I'm going to get... I'm going to get Apple standing behind it. There is a I I'm get, sort of there, there is a kind of guarantee that uh, uh, that eBay has. Uh, yeah, how long? Oh, I'll swear. tell you what. I'll tell you what. I bought everything I buy. I've only bought only bought one computer through Apple new. Everything else I bought, I bought through their refurb program. You know yeah. the the clearance store. Yeah. And for years they'll service it. I mean, they have taken care of me up and down, left and right with Apple TVs, with my wife's MacBook Air that I bought yeah. that way. The only one I didn't buy that way is oh. this, this MacBook Pro that I'm on right now. And how much you money, get how, with how much did, money did you save by getting the refurb? Um, somewhere like around 400 bucks. Yeah, I might, I might check that out, you know. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, if they've refurbished them, I, many times I've said, I would rather have a refurb than a brand new because the brand new so can break, but the refurb has been, right? huh? It's been tested and made, they got it back to working. Yes, Vernon. It's brand new when you get it. Yeah. This, this PC that I'm using, talking to you, Alex, I bought used refurbished on eBay. It is a PC. It has windows seven on it. And I paid $165 with two monitors. Hmm. Well, this and it has a five hundred a five hundred gigabyte hard drive. You know, this I, one I got on Craigslist for like two hundred bucks back in twenty thirteen that I'm talking to you on. Yeah, I yeah. do this show off of a PC. Uh, I don't do it off the Mac. Um, I would feel much more comfortable buying a PC from eBay because PCs are easier to work on. You can go out and buy a replacement piece if something goes pretty easily with Mac. Everything is proprietary. Yep. Well, that was what was so great about the Mac Pro that I have. I could literally replace everything in this Mac Pro myself. Okay? Put in the hard drives, put in the memory. I could even probably change the processors if I had to. Okay? Because it's a card that that's, comes that's out. The co that's the water-cooled one, right, you got? Or is that the model before it? What do you mean water-cooled? Well, the way you used to have the, the big... Uh, Apple Towers, well, the company I work, well, those this big is the, this metal is the things. This is the tower, they the have, aluminum tower. They were water-cooled. I don't think this is water-cooled. Oh, okay. Well, the ones we had were water-cooled. But anyway, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been a great great machine. I have another one sitting in the other room that's, uh, it, won't, it won't upgrade beyond Snow Leopard. It's so old, but it still works. It's hey, still, you can't kill them. These, oh, these are, these are monsters, you know. But with the new stuff that they build, like the Mac Mini, it's all encased. You know, it, it, if you got to buy it with the memory when you buy it, you got to buy it with the you know whatever you want for the speed and stuff because you can't upgrade it yourself. I could upgrade this if I said I only want it with the with one two terabyte hard drive, then that was fine because I pull that and just. In fact, I, how I got this one going is I took all my old hard drives out of the other machine and slipped them into this one, and I was good to go. It was like uh, my machine was working. It was like I changed the brains of the machine. You know? Try to do that with Windows. Never happened. Really? Why is that? You can't pull your system drive out of a Windows machine, put it in another machine, and expect it's going to boot. every dri Your video drivers, your no drivers, you will not boot. You could take your data disks and do it, but you're not taking the system drive out of any Windows machine. Well, and really? Putting it in any, yeah. you know, absolutely. Be because uh, you uh, format uh, those yeah. Mac drives. I mean, years. Oh, you could re. Oh, you could. I, I, I think what Alex is saying he did was he pulled the drives out, put them in the new machine, powered it on, and it worked. Oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, it became like my old machine. Everything right. was in the same you, place and everything. You take your C drive out of your Windows computer. I don't care if you put it in the same brand computer and fire it up. It isn't going to boot. Really? <laughs> no. no. You, nope. you would think boot. logically it would. Too many different vendors, too many different options. Variables. 
PC vendors, unlike Mac, yeah. don't keep things the same. They buy component, not component. They buy commodity parts. Mm -hmm. So you might you're going to get different pieces based on what they what they get the cheapest. Yeah, that's why PCs are way cheaper than Macs. Yeah. Well, you know, I love the Mac Minis because I ha I have three of them. One of which I bought from Phil, and then I had to fix it because it blew up on me. But uh, it, uh, you know, well, you, you shouldn't plug it into a wall socket that has a sh that has a short. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, uh, but it, but still, uh, that one is a particularly good uh, mini Mac Mini. However, I understand the new Mac Minis, even the cheapest one surpasses that one. You know, in performance. Up, yeah. In performance, uh, and and it's uh, and I we bought one about a couple of months ago for Marjorie. I wish we had waited, but you know we couldn't because she needed a new computer. Uh, it, you know, um, it it's. I just don't. The thing I don't like about Mac is how proprietary they are. That they don't allow you to be able to swap and switch stuff in. You know, there's no reason they used to put in the in the old Mac Minis, I believe. Uh, they actually had a slot in the bottom where you could replace the memory to upgrade the memory. Uh, not in the one you got from no, me. No, not in the one I got from you. Not in any of the new ones. But uh, I and, pumped up and, the memory in my older my older Mini. I did. I put a gig of memory in mine. Yeah, well, that's 2007. Yeah, yeah, but but you know what what happens is um, uh, I had an iMac that I bought and then gave to Marjorie to use. And, I can barely hear Kevin, by the way. And, and I changed the uh, I changed the um, uh, memory in there just by you unscrew a couple of screws and there there's the memory and you just flip in the new stuff or add stuff. And finally, I figured out how you fix an iMac too when the hard drive goes. Uh, just get yourself one of these little, you know, the 99 buck uh, ma mini drives. Plug it into the uh, USB on the iMac. Uh, w uh, uh, set it up so that you can in put in your uh, your operating system. You put it on that little drive, and then you have the machine boot from that little drive all the time. And you got yourself a brand new machine. Yep, one of those. So you know, I mean, uh, 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 I'm it's gonna be slower, but it'll be it'll work. You it, know, it's this, slow. This, no, you know, it's this, only slow when you boot it up. Once you're running, yeah. it it's the anytime same. you have to read off that hard disk, it's gonna be slower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right because booting up, you'll notice it more. But uh, <laughs> when you boot off of a disk that they put on uh, directly on the hard drive, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, uh, on the motherboard. You got a direct bus into the into the to the electronics, right? right? With that, you're going through a USB port, USB cable, you know. So yes, it yeah. works, but it's going to be anytime you access that hard drive. It's yeah, going to I'll be tell much you what, what it's going to work better on are the newer iMacs if they go bad, because they've got a USB 3.0, which is a pretty fast. Throughput. Be better, but it's yeah. still not going to be like being on the bus. But still, I got a working little computer. You know, you know the difference between a Mac and a PC is right now. It's about uh, three thousand dollars. I have yeah. a, I have a 2010 MacBook Pro laptop that I'm using, and it works fine. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I have uh, laptops that I bought for Faye. That uh, you know, within a year or two, uh, that there are their um, PC laptops, they're they're obsolete. They they slow down. The uh, you know they they they're, they become bricks, uh, and it doesn't take very long. Where hey, I'm I'm on a computer you're that's actually uh, you're actually wrong. Almost nine Phil. years old. You're wrong, Phil. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm I, on the I, computer. It's I not, agree with it, Phil. I, I agree with Phil. I, but part of the problem is the way the way the way Microsoft does their updates oh, I see. they get they do a really poor job of cleaning up and so the more the longer you run a version of Windows and you run updates on it it just slows the crap okay, out of that but, machine but, and there isn't but, anything you could do about it except reinstall no, well that's what I'm saying you I maybe think they do that on purpose too how old is your Mac uh, Pro your, your old one uh, it's like 2008 
Which one are you talking about? Uh, the, the, the I, have one two, that, I have two of them. One I'm not I'm not using right now. Oh well, you had one that was uh, you were this using. This one, this one is uh, this is ones from 2010, 2011. All right, yeah. you know, I, I mean, you just don't see PCs lasting that long. Um, I don't know. This PC I'm using here has been going for quite a while. It was used in my wife's office, and then I used it. Uh, of course, we completely rebuilt the OS in it uh, when I got it because we cleaned everything off the computer. But it's been working just fine. I can't. I, I, it's actually the first time I've actually liked a Windows machine in years. You know? Yeah. Uh, and it's a. It's not an expensive one. It's a Lenovo. And um, they it, make uh, a good product. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you don't mind being spied on. Really? Why? It's a Chinese company. Oh wow! They put, they've got spyware on your machine somewhere. Oh, you know, the bathroom. You know something? I I'm just I'm just kidding. I, I don't know. mind being spied on. The federal on. government will not buy any Lenovo products. Really? Really? Oh, absolutely. If, if when we were, I had a com I was working with the federal government, and we were buying. They were buying IBM. We were buying IBM servers for them. The minute Lenovo bought the IBM X86 line of servers. Federal government said, "That's it. Replace everything. It's got to be American, especially because of the BIOS." Really? Oh yeah. Hmm. So you think they're spying on us? The federal government's not taking any chances. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're spying. No, on No, I'm not talking about the Chinese. Windows I'm talking. PC, about, I'm not but... talking about the Chinese government. I'm talking about our government. Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they will not buy any Chinese computers. Wow. Do we still have a, a government here? <laughs> huh? Do we still have a, a government? Not really. United yeah, Melania. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, she's not, running not, the show. Now she's, run, form now, form she, now form she's, run, she's running the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess there was somebody in the State Department that uh, they had a beef with. No, somebody, it's the somebody, National Security somebody, Council. Uh, oh, National Security, NSA, yeah. yeah. She'll be firing a bunch of people tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, well, what was her name, the woman that they want to get? Uh, get Rydell or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> from the Greece. <laughs> Pretty little vindictive twat that she is. Yeah. Uh, hey, there's Ray. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Ray. Uh, Ray and I got together with John Perulis on Saturday. <laughs> whoop de fucking do pictures. Yeah, so we had a great nice. time. Yeah. yeah, I saw a few of your blood shots on TV on the uh, Facebook there. Yeah, blood sport. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, Ray was uh, twenty feet up in the air on a on a platform that was about sixteen inches square, and uh, up there for hours. Uh, my back still hurts. <laughs> my, yeah, I was hurting the next day. <laughs> what were you doing? My do hands were hurting from pushing up on the thing, you know, and I was climbing. Uh oh, climbing on a little ladder, yeah. What were you doing? Yeah. Was Perulis working you guys for free? Yep. Uh, no, he gave us access. Uh, oh, fuck, no, fuck that. Shot. Fuck access. Money, money, <laughs> money. Fun. Don't let that <laughs> cheap fuck care. get away with that. He's a good guy. And uh, we had a great much. time. What, Ray? I don't think he makes much anyway. Nah. Yeah, but I mean. It's a really small promotion. I mean, there are a lot of people there, but it's it's just a local California thing northern yeah. california yeah. yeah well you got some fire mongolia you, you got some yeah. major motherfucking fires going on out there yeah i i'm so glad to be out of the northern california right now uh and breathing some fresh air even though it's raining here could it, uh, are you uh, getting smoke were you getting smoke out there in contra costa oh uh, the oh, yeah. sky is totally uh gray and ashen from the uh yeah uh, from from it and it's acrid it just it it Burns your lungs. People wear masks all day around here. Yeah, wow. I had to wash all my cars. There was like thick. Do you thing. do you do you agree with the president that it's the forestry's fault? Yeah, fuck no, him. it's federal, but it's the federal. For, yeah, fuck the, him. All he, the he land, all the land, that, the campfire <laughs> fire is federal forest. All that he's saying it's state man. The state fucked it up. It's all federal forest. Now, uh, Ray, was the campfire yeah. uh, fire? Uh, the one that burned the town of Paradise. Yeah, and that's a federally run forest. Yes, it's on the but, edge. And of he federal, said California yeah. screwed up, and it's but federally the town, run. The whole town is a city. No, the forest around the town. Yeah, well, it's there's on a the lot edge of federal, federal forest. 
It's on the edge of the federal yeah. grounds. Now, the state stopped funding uh, the bureau that he was talking about. No, it's a federal. It's a federal for. I'm not going to even talk about it anymore. That's all right. I'm you're not. not you're not. Li you're not listening, I mean, Phil. He He's say saying it's a, it's a federal forest. Therefore, how can he blame California when it was the government that that uh, takes care of it? Yeah, he, he did, but he. But it's stupid. He did blame California, but it's a federal land. Yeah. So I mean, he make no sense. Yeah, and, and who cares anyway? All these people died. And, and I think, look, you know, I, I, I think I think you can make uh, you can gripe about that later on when it's going on. You don't say, well, you deserve what you're getting because you didn't blah, blah, blah. No, you become a president. You say we our hearts are going out to you and any federal funds you need will be there to help you rebuild. That's what a president oh, he, does. You don't sit there and in today. the middle of it go neener, neener. I hope funds. you die. Yeah, Maybe he, he could go the there and federal toss funds some paper and started towels. Yeah. reversing his bullshit <laughs> today when he started signing papers, but he was reversing his bullshit. Yeah. No, he was just making it a political thing because California is a blue state, and he wants yeah. to blame California, but it was federal yeah. forests surrounding the town of Paradise, so it makes no sense. He was talking out his ass like he always It does. doesn't matter. His base loves it. It doesn't matter if it's true or not, and he knows it. That's right. He's a well, I mean, Phil well, has to have same, Phil has to have some Orwellian bullshit. Yeah, we always have to listen. Yeah, to Phil it. has yeah. to have something to jerk off to, you know. <laughs> He's doing research right now. You could tell. Yeah. <laughs> well, no He's problem. trying to prove you wrong. Whatever. I mean, if you can't sit on the, the bed with a, a smile on man, his face, then you're just well. I do. Out. I just think that you know, the, uh, part of the job of a president is to be conciliatory in situations like this, not to stoke the fires, so to speak. Exactly, and not turn it into a political thing. I mean, come yeah. on, man. The whole town just got obliterated. I mean, uh, does, he think <laughs> I don't that, have it. does he think that by what he's doing, he's going to get California to love him anymore? You know? <laughs> he doesn't care because his base doesn't come. Yeah, but he there. doesn't care. But, you know, if he surprised them, he might get a base in California. Well, a lot of people Never. That, but you know Never. what? That'll only piss off his base. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of like saying out, he didn't come out here for Santa Rosa, and he sure is fucking coming out here for Paradise. That's for sure. Well, listen, I got something we can talk about besides Trump. Let me go back here and get this information. Really? Huh? By the way, this this national security <laughs> aide that's leaving the White House that Melania once fired. Yeah. yeah. It's a woman. Yeah. So it yeah. must be that he put he he she must have made a Google eyes at, at Trump or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be. Probably, he, he no, I, I don't. I don't think that. Melania minds it when people make Google eyes at Trump because it takes the pressure off of her. No, you she know. said that she said that um, she disrespected <laughs> her on one of the trips. She said something disrespectful. Oh well, that's terrible. It's just. Yeah, uh, he probably fucked her. <laughs> probably. I don't think so. Did you see? What does he have to fuck her with? I don't think he did. Um, he, he'd say he's no, he didn't type. anyway. Oh, okay, we got a couple items here that I got to talk about. This is one that really... I never knew her. ...is, is really <laughs> getting to be a, a big bone of contention here in New York. Have you heard about Amazon? Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. a bunch of bullshit, too. Yeah. Michael Maniacal uh, Jeff Bezos that oh, he is. Oh, okay, well, let's, you don't have to go after Jeff Bezos. We know what he is. Um, they have they they went around and they they auditioned cities around the United States to be the new headquarters for headquarters number two for Amazon. Uh, they went everywhere in this country, and every country presented proposals and tax rebates and shit like that. And yep. then they decide they're going to do it right outside of Washington D.C. in the New York City. Come yep. on. That's that's for come ons to begin with. Secondly, the state of New York is picking up um, how much uh, money is the state going to uh, they get him tax breaks that will surpass one point five billion dollars here in New York. How do you our, like that? And our You're new con for Amazon. I, what? You're paying your tax well, dollars. Well, hold on. You're then agreeing with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the new congresswoman from Queens, uh, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is brilliant and very, very far to the left, who says this is bogus. Very why, why should Amazon get a tax break? 
This I is agree. a multi-billion dollar corporation that doesn't need a tax break. We could use that money to fix the subways. Yes, uh, Rob. And the fucked so up the, freeways are going to have even more so now. Yeah. So the, my, my, yeah. Question, my question there is, why not Amazon? Because everybody else, every other business, major business that comes into a state, in any state, gets major it's tax breaks. So unless you're going to stop that practice altogether, why single out just Amazon? If it's an up-and-coming company, no, I, I could see that. Hold on a second. They, they, Employ people, Alex. Fuck that. Yeah. They'll they employ people free. anyway. Oh. Fuck that, Phil. They have to employ them anyway to get them to work. Oh, they can employ them in Texas. You know something? Yeah. They would probably still have come to New York City if we didn't give them $1.5 billion. But fuck them. They're a rich company. They have yeah. billions upon... They're, I, I, they're an almost a trillion-dollar company, okay? They don't need a $1.5 billion rebate where we can take that money and use it here in the state to shore up our infrastructure. Yes, Vernon. I feel a little guilty that uh, that whole concept got started here in the state of Kentucky when our then governor, Martha Lane Collins, brought Toyota to Georgetown, Kentucky, and they build Camrys and ship them all over the world now from Georgetown, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And this was farmland. It was uh, actually horse farmland that uh, they ended up pulling together for that plant. And they've expanded it five times, and the employment has tripled since they yeah. built the plant. Didn't they, Why they uh, do it? build Corvettes in Kentucky also? Bowling that's Green. down in Bowling Green. That's a different plant, but that's oh. down in Bowling Green. That's where they burn Cadillacs or uh, Corvettes. Mm. But the Camry, the Camry plant in Georgetown, Kentucky, actually came here on an incentive similar to what Amazon was able to get from New York and Virginia uh, to to locate there. I actually thought we had a good shot at getting the headquarters to for Amazon because we have the UPS World Port here in Louisville. So, Vernon, you're saying that they created jobs and 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 good tax base. And income yeah. for the state because of the incentives that they were given and the jobs that were created. Well, who, who's going to say they wouldn't have done yeah. it anyway? Well, they would have gone to whoever was going to give them the tax. Well, well, if nobody gives them these fucking rebates, they're just going to have to decide where they want to go and build there. That's, 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 you're yeah. right. You're right. But that's not the way it is. No, it's you not. Know, I mean, why, why should these huge companies, it's kind of like, you know, uh, P Patrick comes on here and gripes about paying for a baseball stadium. Yeah. That's you different. Know? No, it's not different. No, it's, it's not. It, it's no, the same that, thing, Phil. It's the same fucking thing, the Phil. Like, uh, just on a smaller, on a just on a smaller scale. Yes, Rob. How many people is this going to employ? Think about that. Think about how many people how many people are going to now be spending money in and around that area. All of the commerce that is going to I mean there's lunches and dinners and everything that goes along with a big company coming to an area. It's a coup. They yes, they're giving away tax money, but unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Well, you're talking about to begin with. To begin with. To begin with. Uh, it, it, between the two places, there will be 50,000 jobs, probably about 25 of them here in New York, okay, New York City. The question they have, and everybody has, is where are they going to find these 25,000 people? You know, I don't work talk show hosts. Yeah, right. Like, if I, if I went over there, you know, some of these jobs, they said the... Uh, some of these uh, 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 these jobs would be available. If I went over at my age and tried to get a job with them, do you think I'd get one? Actually, you might. No. There are a lot of older Americans no. who, uh, uh -uh. as a desperate no. last resort, they, they work in like, they hire the blast. Blast facilities and whatnot. You know. All kidding aside, you very well could. Yeah, so I'll spend the rest of my life packing boxes on a But you'll be hurt. And huh? I mean that literally and physically and you know, but, you know, <laughs> I call it, you know, because Pittsburgh went through this, too. You know, all the tax breaks they want. First of all, this is why I say that, again, that Trump is a symptom and not a not the cause of all this. This is the this is a definition of fascism as well. And mm -hmm. secondly, I call it mayoral dick sucking. And there was a whole lot of that going on all across the country in those areas that were interested in having that second headquarters. Well, uh, here, here's what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said. Amazon is a billion-dollar company. 
She tweeted this, the idea it will receive hundreds of millions of dollars in tax breaks at a time when our subway is crumbling and our communities need more investment, not less, is extremely con uh, concerning to the residents here. And later, uh, tweet, she subway. added, this isn't just about one company or one headquarters. It's about the cost of living, uh, um, living corps paying their fair share, the corporations paying their fair share, and it's not about picking a fight either. I was elected to advocate for our community interests, and they've requested yeah. clearly me to voice their concerns. A representative republic. Yep. They should be contributing to the infrastructure if they're going to be using it. They will be. Agreed. No, no, they're yeah. not, Phil. 5,000 jobs that yeah. are all producing uh, uh, tax income. Yeah, right. Right, slave. Yeah, the working class will slave labor. They they, they said the average uh, the average wage will be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Of course, they're yeah. not telling you that millions of that will be going towards uh, corporate uh, executives' pay. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Ray. Yeah, like you say, that's not the mean. That's the average wage. So, anyway, um, also Amazon causes a lot of unemployment. Um, Just like Walmart. There are so many, yeah, and actually they're hurting Walmart. <laughs> yeah, that's creeps uh, the bloods, Walmart and Amazon. Well, they, yeah, I mean, Macy's, Costco, Whole Foods, every grocery store, everything is, is they're causing unemployment in all of those sectors. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they're not being a smart business and, and everything, but why should they get a break? You know what, we don't have a single... I don't understand it, why they should get a break do, do you know what we don't have when a, it's a... Yeah. You don't, doesn't make any do sense. you know what we don't have a single one of in New York City? What? Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Uh, well. They banned them years ago. Wouldn't allow them to come right. in. Yeah, but they'll let right. Amazon in. So yeah, but yeah. Amazon and Amazon. And they're going to give Amazon and, money. And the Dom, I mean, Amazon's doing Kong, the same but thing. They're allowing to, Godzilla into their city walls. Yeah. Uh, 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 Amazon is doing the same thing to uh, small business different. that w w Walmart was doing. It's a crazy it, world. It's man. different. The reason they didn't allow Walmart and stores like that into New York City was not because of a big company and keeping a big company out. New York City is made up of hundreds of tiny neighborhoods. People walk across the street to buy groceries, to go to the dry cleaner. It's like old time America. Amer New York is a bunch of tiny little communities. If you let Walmart in or any of those big stores, well, you're going to blow there. that up and, but, and you'll have nothing. There's, there's, there's plenty of big boxes there. There's Home Depot. There's Lowe's. You'll that, still have that outcome. Problem you got Amazon. Costco. You know. that, yeah. Costco that, pays its employees fair wage. Well, so does it Amazon increase their No, uh, Amazon doesn't pay employee. a fair wage. They, Amazon pays stock. a ship people, wage. So, look, I, I'm really surprised that those big box stores, maybe not so much the big box stores like, like Lowe's and Home Depot, but Costco and such, because I know when I lived in the city, you didn't have a car. So unless you're going to get stuff delivered everywhere, you walk across, you, you eat fresh. You go to the store and you buy what you want for the day and the day, the next day maybe, and now you're you always in the store. We you know can because you, you go to the local grocer across That's the street from you. That's what my meeting was about today is that the trend is to buy and deal with local small companies and that the uh, that the trend, uh, the guy that we just hired as the uh, president of our company uh, was uh, the uh, president uh, of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and a number of other. Uh, he was also uh, with Pepsi. Well, he'd be good at then t telling you how to get grease stains out of rugs. Well, but uh, basically uh, what he's saying is that the trend is to buy local. Uh, and, and so uh, competing with the big boxes is going to change because people want to deal with local people. Just like Rob was saying, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's reverting to the... There's uh, one problem with that. The that? New York New York has gone out of their New York City, I should say, because Long Island is loaded with all the big box, right? Sure. It New York City has gone out of their way to keep them out. The Chamber of Commerce has done a good job, right? If you if if I've got Walmart down the street here and I've got a you know, you name the big box store. How are you going to open up a little grocer? You can't. It, it's, Plus, it's, I still need to get okay, in my car. Uh, 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 Brian's had his hand up for a while here. I just say I think we have a disagreement, not much of one, uh, uh, Rob, but uh, you're, now we live in the day and age in which anybody can deliver anything to you 
uh, be they employed or be they independent contractors. Yeah, New York City just recently placed a limitation on the number of people that can drive for Uber and Lyft. But, you know, companies like DoorDash and Grubhub and Shipt, which does grocery shopping for you, that has been, that is promulgating, that is being more and more pervasive in addition to, uh, you know, Amazon's own Flex program, which I personally think is a miserable failure, not to mention the fact that it's putting good postal workers out of business. Um, and, um, you know, I just... Yeah, yeah, they banned Walmart, but, uh, you know, like I said, they banned got, uh, King Kong, but they've allowed Godzilla to enter in through their city walls. I mean, I'm beginning to have my doubts about making as many purchases as I do from Amazon uh, because I'm beginning to think that they're just getting a little too big. That's yeah. if they arrive on time. I've noticed some de 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 declining us uh, because a lot of these uh well no what products, used to what used to be what, what used to be contracts. what used to be two-day delivery yeah. is still listed as two-day delivery but if you look like if it's over a weekend it's more like four or five day delivery it's it's yeah. always two no, working days no or it no be. it it used to be there was a point there where they in fact mm -hmm. were delivering on sunday well, yeah that's true yeah that's you know Ray i said uh, we live in a crazy fucked up world uh, I can agree I, more I, than I, that. When I was at the airport, San Francisco airport, uh, I was in a shuttle bus, and I looked down from the shuttle bus that took me from the long-term parking, mm -hmm. and there were more Uber and Lyft vehicles there than there were people, you know, normal vehicles that uh, would you know, drop off and, and pick up. Well, that's, it, that's, that also has contributed to what I understand is an amazing amount of uh, traffic in San Francisco. And, yeah, they're uh, everywhere. Yeah. They've got these little yeah. stickers on their windows, and they're aggressive. And a delineation of the money pool for people who do those services. Uh, Br know? Bree is calling us. Where are you calling from, Bree? Hi there, Alex. I'm in Dubai. In Dubai. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is, this a, is this a full house? No. We're one short of a full house. I think. One more. Yeah. Well, can I just, I drive for Uber and Lyft, and yeah. let me just say at the airport, uh, that's totally true, but in the old days, and the, there was just as crowded as you would just have a friend pick you up, and there were just as many cars. And so, so people... I, I, I uh, shared an Uber with someone uh, when I got out uh, from Chattanooga. We were both coming to this uh, facility, and uh, it, it was actually a very nice experience. Uh, you know, that uh, gal picked us up, said she was a, a, a nurse, and she's a uh, single mom and trying to earn a few extra bucks and uh it was a, it was a very pleasant experience yeah that's uh, what i do mm -hmm. yeah. it might be a very, I, well, when it I, might when be I don't a, have other work i do that it might be a very pleasant experience except here in new york city we have not had uh, that same pleasant experience for instance the the idea of uh of, of uh, surge pricing uh has gotten completely out of hand here uh, and uh a trip w that you know would cost you far less taking a cab uh is suddenly because it's surge pricing ray do they have surge pricing in the bay area yeah but it, but it, but it's not an issue because it, it, it's not like it ha it's not like the problem they have in new york it's not why it? I, I don't know i don't know because they have different pricing in new york uh they have a different situation going on there i don't know why people would choose an uber or a lyft during surge pricing when you can get a cab off the street anytime well, that, that, one, one, of, one, of, one of the reasons really? well i thought it was pretty easy to get a cab no well yeah, it get out of work and try to find a it, cab it around depends. dinner time it depends yeah, yeah. you gotta fight uh, for it there are times uh, yeah. there are times when you can get a cab like that and there are other times when you can't get it like that actually uh, on my corner here in harlem there was a time when i could pretty well get a cab or a green car we have the choice here in manhattan uh uh pretty easily all of a sudden lately it's i have to wait forever for a yellow cab or a green cab to come by you and i don't know uber? if they I, uh, huh you think it's uber that's causing that no it can't be because they're limiting uber now and they're limiting and, lyft and also uh, uber and lyft to drive in new york city you have to have a um a registered chauffeur's license and, and the correct insurance so you can't just do like here and just get you know, pass the, the test. Take the go. family car and go, yeah, go yeah. do it. No, yeah. you have to You have to have all the 
you know, the stuff, right a lot stuff. of the stuff that most cab drivers have. Uh, the other big story today, besides uh, Amazon uh, trying to take over the world once again, I think, I think, I think the terrible part was I would really have taken my hat off to Amazon if they had given it to some of the small cities around the country that could use the commerce. Instead yeah, of New York City, which is up to our, we're up Pittsburgh's to our. Pittsburgh's thankful that they in, don't. In New, in New York City, yeah. we're up to our ass in commerce already. You know, we didn't need Amazon to be here on top of everything. Yeah, but if else. they if they move to a town in Kentucky like where Vern was talking about, uh, where are they going to get twenty five thousand people? Well, you know, I mean, then then spread the wealth Mexico. around. Spread the wealth. If around. you build it, they will come. Yeah, exactly. the caravan, the caravan could work. Yeah, there. the I caravan. I tell you what, the cost biggest cost problem cost can be controlled, Vernon. Here, here's the problem that that you have to take into consideration. Here in Winchester, I've, I've got a good friend of mine, one of my neighbors, who is a big executive at one of the local banks here, and so he's very involved with all the chamber of commerce. The biggest problem here is finding workers that aren't addicted to drugs. Yeah, the opioid addiction is causing problems here. They can't. They've got so many jobs, and they right. can't fill them. Because so that's the problem when you go to a lot of these small areas, you get a, a small like area of or a group of people who who are your pool of people to work, and yet you're going to do drug. Uh, well, isn't that what Trump and, is, is 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 railing against? Is this uh, opioid crisis? He's doing it half ass like anything else. Yeah, he's but, not doing it. You know, he's not uh, doing Trump, anything. He just he just, he just does. He thinks that by doing a tweet, he's doing something. Right. But Rob, <laughs> you know. Alex. It's to me. It's Alchem's razor, and I'm with the libertarians on this. Want to solve the problem? Legalize the shit. I exactly. agree. You know that's what they do in the Scandinavian countries. Here, people get addicted to the opioids. Not just the marijuana. Doctors don't, I'm talking everything. No opioid. The doctors don't prescribe it anymore, and then they got to go out on the street and get heroin. And, and then they're screwed. Well, are you saying it's okay if they continue to take opioids for the rest of their lives? As as they're on I'm just saying, what, I'm, just, I'm just saying that we're not treating it like a medical problem. You, you, we're treating it like a crime. You know what I found the was people, you know what I fa found was impossible years ago in the in the movie Scarface, when the South American interests hire him to go out and kill somebody because the guy is trying to put the brakes to the drug trade in America you by clamping person, yeah. by clamping down on them. That's the guy you pay off, because yeah. when you clamp down on it, you then bring the prices up. The guy you kill is the guy who wants to legalize it. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yes. Uh, 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 yes, Brian. I was just gonna say. Uh, uh, first, I, I I love that movie almost as much as you do. Uh, both versions, as a matter of fact. But uh, you know, the the so according to the movie, they had to kill the guy they had to have tony montana kill the guy because he was incorruptible or wasn't going to be bought out yeah and that's the very guy that can get the makes the drug cost more on the streets but you're right the ones who can legalize it yeah they probably yeah. would have a target on their back at yeah. least temporarily i mean you would the last thing that the cartels down there want is for it to become legal in the united states why yep. because it would take the the cost of it, it would take the, the bottom out of the price out of uh, you know so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the way for us to take care of, the, of this problem is to legalize everything and then to be able to put everything in place that if people uh, want the help. Way, the way to take care wait, of the wait, problem. Wait, let me finish, Phil, is that you then take the, the uh, because you now have it uh, in the open, Tax. people will be, it will be easier for people to seek help. Rather yes. than to admit to taking an illicit drug, right. and to have okay. that a medical, it's a medical center. issue, not a crime. Exactly. Right, but that, that does it right. Just so, so stop. Don't make it legal. So people, so people who don't do it would go out and do it. No. But make it decriminalize. I'm not going to so do it. I don't do that help. shit, Rob. I understand that. But there are plenty it. of people who would, especially young people. Then there I are mean, plenty of people who would have help then. Well, they could have help either way because you don't have to. You, Not you the could, criminals. Well, that's well what there's I'm a saying. difference to, between decriminalizing and legalizing. Right. I'm all for it's, legalizing marijuana and stuff like that, but opioids are a terrible addiction, and people are people die from it every day. It is right. not like marijuana. It's benzodiazepines too, which people never talk about. We also don't, you know, we don't, we don't, aren't doing a great education process about these drugs because the trouble with a lot of these opioids 
is they're prescribed by doctors and people have them in their homes and they don't understand that they can overdose on them. Anymore, though, we're going you know, education so because it was given to you by your doctor because you got it legally, suddenly it doesn't seem like this could hurt you when well, these they, things they are just pay. they're just as deadly if, if your doctor is prescribing them to you or not prescribing well, them to you. Yeah, don't these guys take methadone and methadone's they, a different story altogether, Phil. Methadone. There was a song that somebody wrote. It went, uh, Rockefeller selling skag, but he says it's phony. Stick a needle in your arm and call it methadone. Uh, it, well, it, that's it, very cute. No, but, but it is true. Hilarious. It's true. What we did, what we did, is we came up with a drug that was worse than heroin to get people off of heroin. Yeah, because heroin was illegal. In Scandinavia, they use heroin. A good heroin for people who want to get off eventually, and then uh, they can still work and live a normal life. And then when uh, then when they're ready, they get off of the there heroin. There are there are functional and heroin addicts. There, yeah, that's right. It, it, that's one of the. There's several lies about heroin that were perpetrated over the years. Uh, number one, and it was the most dangerous one, that just one one shot of heroin and you're hooked, and that's an absolute lie. But the fact was that people would try it once and then figure they were hooked. The fact is, it takes about six weeks of abuse for you to become to become addicted. Uh, yeah. Secondly, is this is this other uh, other notion that uh, that people can't uh, work and exist while high on heroin? And the fact is, there are a lot of very functional heroin addicts out there who hold down jobs and everything else. Right, yes, yeah, first with stabs of, all over their arms. First, first of all, uh, you can hit, you, 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 don't hit it, you know. You can you snort can it, Phil. You, can, you can snort it. Snort it too. It's not wine yeah. raising my hand. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yes, Brian, and then I then Vernon. Huh? <laughs> Shut up, Phil. Thank you. Well, I'll, take, I'll do your job for you, Alex. Shut the fuck up. But anyway, uh, oh, the opposite oh, of uh, right. incremental. Yeah, I, I, making myself sound smarter than I actually am. I looked up the definition of the word that's the opposite of incremental. Decremental, decrementalism, what uh, Ray's, Ray's talking about. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. That's Apparently, that's what the Scandinavian countries are doing. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, decrementalism. Vernon. Yeah. Vernon. Uh, some states are actually uh, going the wrong direction, in my opinion, and my state is one of them. Oh. They have they have that gabapentin, like you're taking, yeah. Alex. Mm -hmm. They have that in the same category as a controlled substance as oxycodone yeah. why i don't know i mean i some nights i take three other nights i take one i don't suddenly break out in sweats i i, I could stop uh, the gabapentin tomorrow and not you know even begin to feel the effects um Isn't that what all you say huh no, yeah Isn't right that what all no. you yeah, say? yeah but i mean i can stop tomorrow you know uh, a three is what I'm supposed to be taking. I just take like one because I just don't like the, how tired it makes me the next day. Yes, uh, Brian. Yeah, I'm a chatterbox tonight. Anyhow, um, yeah, that's not it. Uh, that's not the only thing, uh, Vernon. And my state's got issues too. But your state and Rob's states and uh, Scott Boddicker's home state of Idaho, if I'm not mistaken, they all have one thing in common, dovetailing with the drug issue, that uh, you're the only states in the union aside from Florida now, that criminal uh, that tells felons that they cannot vote at all as long as, long as they're felons. Doesn't yeah. New Hampshire have uh, a, a drug problem as well, or a heroin problem? Yeah, they have, they have Every a problem. Every state in the union Ver, 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 Vermont especially, and, and I have no idea why. Yeah. You know, because it's so nice up there. Well, because the, because the doctors were very liberal in giving it out. Yeah. That's right. really a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. And part of the reason for that, I think, uh, is that they have no way medically of determining what your pain level is. They ask you what your pain level is, and then they treat it accordingly. Yeah. They have no way of measuring that. I just, Alex, I, what's your pain level? I, I just don't understand why gabapentin is considered to be in the same class as Oxycontin because it's it, not. It's just not the same kind of drug. Is Lyrica also? Is Full Lyrica House. Also yeah, Full Lyrica. House. Full House. Yeah. Hey, um, hey Lyrica would be, would be uh, 
Lyrica is like, I'm trying to remember what drug it's like. I think it's a little bit like gabapentin in that it's a nerve, it uh, nerve blocker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I, because I took gabapentin and it made my nerve pain worse. And so they switched me to Lyrica and it worked. Yeah, well, let me, let me ask you this, though. Did, did you feel you were hooked on it? No. No. So I, I, you know, I have no idea why they put it in the same class with OxyContin. What I am hooked on is Clonopin, and I have been for 20 years, and it's taking it's going to take me about a year to get off. And I took it only because I was having sleep issues before I knew I had yeah. sleep apnea, and now I'm I'm totally dependent on it, and I have to I, I can only decrease 10 percent every month. You take Clonopin because, to go to sleep. I take Clothespin to keep from now, snoring. If I stop uh, taking it, I could die. If I stop wow. taking yeah. it, yeah, and and, you and know, the thing the about biggest problem is opioids. In this country, you know the thing yeah. about clonopin. Uh, I took one to uh, on a long plane trip, I, and you know I slept for twelve hours, and there was no hangover, no right. no side effects. It, it yeah. was it was not bad. Yeah, you but know? you but you do that for two weeks, and you're going to have to wean off of it, or you're going to feel like yeah. shit. Yeah. Yes, uh, 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 Jack bills. has his yeah. Jack has his pen up. Oh yes, as a matter of fact, I have my pen up, which is uh, <laughs> a joke in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys are really talking about some things that I have some personal experience with. Uh, and let me uh, screw up my courage to talk about this. Uh, my sister, mm -hmm. who was a functioning heroin addict, mm -hmm. did heroin for almost 20 years. Oh, wow. Went to work every day. Had a responsible job with a large outfit there in San Francisco. Raised two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, decided that she would get clean and sober. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. How old was she when she did this? Because there is an there is a thing about heroin that people. Another thing they don't talk about. It's a thing called maturing out. Yes, that's that, what happened with Marcia. Yeah. Uh, she started probably when she was, well, let's see, I was, I was almost out of college. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she would have been 18, 19, running around with a bunch of musicians. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we all know how that works, don't we, Alex? Yeah. Anyway. We just lost Jack. <laughs> What the, oh, no. what this he'll call back. What the mature, hey, I, what the maturing out is is that at a certain age, for some reason, they don't have an explanation for it. Uh, heroin addicts suddenly will wake up one day and say, "I don't need it." Really? You know, yes. If it doesn't kill you first. If it doesn't kill you first, you'll mature out of it. Jeez. It, there's really something. The it has something to do with your. Uh, uh, what's the what's what am I looking for? Uh, it has to do with your metabolism, I think. And there's a metabolism change that happens as you get older, and somehow they they mature out. But is that what happened, Jack? Did she suddenly one day just kind of stop? She didn't stop suddenly. Yeah. Uh, she spent seven years, maybe even eight years, trying to get off of methadone. Oh, that was the terrible part. That was the terrible part. She said the heroin, for her, there was no high. There was just not being sick. Because she was dependent. Of heroin. Yeah. Addiction. Well, you know, yeah, here, so here let, let me say something. Let me say something, Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing about heroin is you can, you can get off of heroin without using it in about, I think it's four or five days. That's, That's right. right. All right? That's right. The getting like off of methadone takes anywhere Oops. from three months to six months. Yeah, Mar Marcia yeah. struggled to get off of methadone for five years because they kept pushing her towards it. They kept, you know, the program that she was in yeah. maintained her addiction. Now... Well, what they did is they should have said, let's make heroin legal, but they couldn't bring themselves to do that because they had painted themselves in a corner politically. And right. so they said, oh, we've come up with this new stuff. You take this. We'll let this be legal and you can do this. OK. And they knew and it right was and it was and was it was bullshit. worse than heroin. Yeah. But what you guys haven't mentioned is America's 
worst and most dangerous drug. Alcohol. Alcohol causes more deaths, more malfunctioning people, more family breakups than anything. Well, you know, you know, uh, uh, the, the idea, uh, I, there's a very good book I read on prohibition. And, oh, we lost, we lost Phil, and we didn't even know it because he was just still. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> gee, Phil, we didn't even realize we had lost you. It just looked like you were engrossed in what we were saying. Um, uh, 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 what was I going to say? Um, God. Alcohol. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, alcohol. I read a book on prohibition. And after I read this book, I saw why prohibition happened, because alcohol was so pervasive in this country at one point. I mean, there were something like six bars on every street in New York City. All right. Like pizza parlors. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was just horrible. And husbands were losing all their money at the bars and they would come home drunk and beat up their wives. And eventually it was the women's movement in this country, which also brought about women's suffrage. Yeah. that that uh, 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 called for prohibition. And, and, it, and if you remember, t uh, uh, women's right to vote came shortly before prohibition started. Okay, mm -hmm. and it was all part and parcel of that. We never have had the alcohol problem since prohibition ended that we had before it started. So maybe prohibition was a good thing to just put the brakes on. Yes, yes, Jack. I also I'll point out here. the connection between prohibition and the criminalization of marijuana. Yeah, it was the same yeah. time. Yeah, well, also, uh, uh, it, uh, well, you know what also was part of parcel of prohibition work. coming yeah. into being? Taxes. Exactly. The income tax, because they made most of their money off of the taxing of alcohol. And when alcohol was made illegal, they had to replace it with something, so they came up with income tax. Bree, did you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying I like I like our system that we have here in Dubai because if you want to drink, well, first mm -hmm. of all, you have to have a license, which you know if, if you have a you need a license to drive, you need a license to drink. Uh, <laughs> now I don't I don't have a license, yes, but what it does is you know the only place you can get alcohol is going to be um, hotels. It has to be something uh, connected to a hotel. Well, and it, you'd be surprised. Well, There's it's a, it's a Muslim hotels. society, and Muslims are against alcohol, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that they're against it. They're just uh, not in favor of it. Well, you know? uh, but, but the family that controls your, that country is very benevolent and accepting of all different. Uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, you mean this emirate? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's true. But what what the thing is is that it ba they basically say, look, you know, if you if this is something you feel you have to want to do, then okay, you can do it in in certain places. But if you get out of hand, if you do things you're not supposed to be doing, if you're a bad drunk, in other words, uh, you're gonna be you're gonna probably get in trouble. And so it kind of you know, it, imagine if you could tell everybody in New York City, you know, that goes to a bar. Hey, if if you get out of hand in any way, you're going to really regret it. It's not going to simply be a, a warning or a little, you know, something. You're you're gonna, it's going to be a major thing. Mm -hmm. and I think that would uh, cause a lot of people to uh, curb their behaviors in some ways, and and so it just it keeps it off of every street corner and every you know every little tiny restaurant in the middle of mm -hmm. nowhere, and it you know it keeps it in a. Uh, one place. I don't know. It, I think it works. Jack has his hand up and then Brian. Yes. Jack. Well, Islam does have a prohibition against alcohol, marijuana, hashish. Fun. Uh, uh, you know, just about fun. They, they, they can <laughs> lift your this is the same as being a, I mean, I can say they're against it. But, and, and the reason I know about that, I almost took a job. As a matter of fact, I took a job. I did, the job just did not come through because of the first Gulf War. I took a job with a Ramco oil company to go to Riyadh to run their radio and TV operation for more money than I'd ever heard of. Uh, and I had to take a, a culturalization program on things that you could do, not do, uh, things that might offend some people. And the first thing they said, no alcohol, no drugs, uh, 
followed by uh, uh, no outside religions other than Islam. And uh, they really stressed the uh, the thing about not drinking. But the guy that uh, are you uh, sure that the uh, no outside religions except uh, I think the fact is that Islamics always have approved of Jews oddly enough because they are they are the same. They are, it depends on which country you're in. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia, uh, you know they they ask you what is your religious affiliation. Top on the list, not to let you in the country is being an atheist. <laughs> but they also tell you uh, such things as you can't bring in any Bibles. Uh, there are, to the best of my knowledge, and I, you know, this this is going back over 20 years that, that I was trying to get this job. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no religious emphasis other than the mosque. If people had religious services they of another faith, they did them in their home. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the thing that really struck me m most of all mm -hmm. was uh, this thing about alcohol, because the first thing the guy told me who uh, interviewed me and approved me for the job, mm -hmm. he said, you can't drink in Saudi, but the Brits always have the best stills. Anyway, is that, uh, Ray, is that Ray, Riyadh, you said? Yeah. yeah, that was Riyadh. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, yeah. you've got your hand up. I just, uh, Jack, you're totally right about Saudi Arabia. And uh, I've had a lot of friends that have worked there, and it's scary. But I just want to make let people know, and Bree, I think, will back me up. There there are different degrees of, of, of fundamentalism in different countries in the Arab states. Like U United Arab Emirates is run by a family, but they're very accepting of people uh, different. Wait, oh. <laughs> aren't they hold on united arab emirates is uh an amalgamation of emirates or states so yeah each state has yeah has its own family okay and so so if you're in dubai yeah it they're uh, they're okay. pretty cool but That's if you're in sharjah forget it i'm There's sorry no i'm at, i'm at the country. i'm at the i'm i'm at the one in dubai because I have yeah people that work there, friend. Yeah, okay, but other. But other I think that's other why Dubai has so done recent. so well on the world market is because it has been kind of friendly to Western ideas. Uh, would you not agree yeah. with that, Bree? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's true. Yeah, I have a friend who has a Shakespeare company, and they let him go in there and uh, and let women put on a Shakespeare play. Arab women. Oh, sure. Nice, yeah. You know, which I mean, you wouldn't be able to do yeah, in many you, other Arab states. I'll tell you, I've seen. I, right. I have a screensaver on my Apple TV of um, Dubai and uh, the Burj Khalifa, uh, and uh, I'm telling you, that city is the most futuristic city I've ever seen. Yeah. It's just, it's like well, something out of Buck know, Rogers. Thing, yeah, and it's it's totally international, which is another thing that I like. Yeah. Um, you know, it came out in some poll recently that it was like 83%, you know, on the international scale. And the, the closest one was Brussels, Belgium, which was like 62% or something. Yeah. Uh, so, no, it's good. But, Alex, yeah. there was another issue. I know we're running out of time. We are I, running I, out I of time. If I, could, if I can raise it real quick. Yeah. Um, I, I follow the news of Alex, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that came out recently was her move to D.C. And she claimed that. You know, she wouldn't have enough money for the apartment or whatnot. And then I saw a photo of her that she had posted with uh, the other incoming uh, squad, as she called them. One thing I realized is, you know, the salary is $174,000 for a congressperson. Mm -hmm. So she's going to go essentially from, you know, her situation to making what she made in a year in a month or two. And yeah. as I see them going through that orientation, I can't help but think, that has to have an effect on someone. Well, also, you know, also, going... there are a lot of Congress people who are sleeping in their offices because a lot of that money goes towards travel and things like that. They don't have, you know, that's that's pretty much they have to live on that and do everything on that. Uh, and one hundred and seventy four. Oh, yes. Dollars? Yes. There are literally Congress people who sleep in their offices because they can't afford to have an apartment. 
because because they, you don't live there full time. Uh, yeah, and right? because you're, and you're traveling back and you're traveling back to your constituency, and I think that is that is uh, hardly paid for. It's very it's you've got to have some other source of income to be a congressperson. <laughs> Finally, uh, Brian, you've got about um, yeah. ten seconds. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, speaking of someone who has a. Uh, a few relatives who have been identified as functional alcoholics, in addition to the story that uh, Jack Bishop brought up about his sister. Mm -hmm. uh, I've come to the conclusion on a philosophical basis that I don't believe in a, I don't believe in the notion that a functional addict exists. So long as they can do their job and do their stuff and yeah. be functional contributors to society, how are they any worse than someone who's say addicted to coffee or addicted yeah. to cigarettes? Okay. Hey, listen, that's about <laughs> it. Uh, 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 Phil, are you still there? Move. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it'll be uh, Phil Free Wednesday. Good. I'm going to visit my mom. Okay, good. And uh, right. uh, Jeff, thank you. I wish you luck for putting up with you. Uh, th th thank you, Jeff. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Vernon. Always love hearing from you, Vernon. You too, Brian. You too, uh, Kevin. And especially our friend from Dubai, uh, 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 Bree. Uh, that's it. Uh, what I'd like for all of you to do is, okay, now he comes on there. Wave goodbye to this audience so they can see you. Okay? See you later, guys. Okay. There's our, uh, there's our citizen panel for tonight, and I will hang up on them unceremoniously so Jack can have the lines to be able to do his program with. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, out of here. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, right next is Jack Bishop, who you saw a few moments ago uh, with The Intersection, followed at 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections, Eastern Time, and tomorrow night. We start off the night with our sports show on Wednesdays, and that's with the franchise MC. It's called The Arena, followed by Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And I'll be back again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern Time. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.